got into stick making by watching my granddad trying to put natural roe deer antler onto a stick. That always stuck with me and I made one or two myself and tried to sort of emulate him and I did it in the same way as him. But later on, when I was about 20, in the 80s, I stumbled across a Shooting Times magazine. It had a lovely spread of sticks on, on the front of this magazine and that's what really got me into it in a big way. So I started carving and, um, and it's gone from there. The process of making a stick is really is choosing the piece of wood and then I'll, I'll draw on it. I'll use the pictures that you sent me, then I'll cut it out and then I'll start carving. When the carving's finished and it's coloured and, it, and it's good, then I'll choose a stick. I've got hundreds of sticks and I always struggle to find a stick, you know, so it's just the way it is. But I try and match a good stick, you know. It's dogs. That is the main part of my business. It's people's dogs, whether they've deceased and they want a memory of them, or whether, you know, current dogs. Sometimes I bore the top and put ashes actually in the top of the head, so they've got a walking stick with, with some of their dog's ashes in the head. I do that as well, which is, you know, a lot of people like. I love wood and carving wood and the feel of it. It's a living thing that, you know, you're now using for something you can keep forever. You know, you can carve pretty much anything. You know, everything is manufactured now, plastics, and this is just a 100% natural product. And it's hand carved and handmade, and that's what I love about it. It's really quite an emotional thing and can be, you know. So they've got something for life, they can pass on to their children, and it's a, just a fantastic memory, fantastic present.